welcome everyone to session three of the virtual IOCV conference that we're holding every Wednesday during the month of September. So can I just remind everyone to please leave themselves on mute and leave their video off. Uh, we will accept questions in the chat. So if you can just type your questions into the chat function, if we've got time, we will ask the speaker one or two questions and then the rest of the questions can be answered by the speaker in the chat when the next speaker is, is talking. Um, so we'll, we'll run it like that. So today we're lucky enough for our first speaker to have Irene Lavaggi Credit. Now today you'll have to cope with my Australian accent, the way that I say names. <laughs> So she will be speaking on transcriptome and microRNA analysis in dwarf citrus trees infected with citrus dwarfing viroid. Now, Irene is a project scientist at the Citrus Clonal Protection Program at the University of California in Riverside in the United States. Her research on the graft transmissible pathogens of citrus focuses on citrus viroids in particular and their potential advantages for horticultural purposes. So thanks so much, Irene. Thank you, Nerida, for the kind introduction. And thank you for the opportunity to present uh, our recent findings on citrus dwarfing viroid. So today we'll focus on the high throughput sequencing studies using citrus dwarfing viroid dwarfed field citrus trees. I divided my talk into four main sections. Um, and first, let me give you some background on citrus dwarfing viroid and its potential applications. So this project really began when Professor Semanchik, then at the University of California in Riverside, decided to play with the then newly identified citrus viroids. So he planted Valencia trees, inoculated them with citrus dwarfing viroid, and found an impressive canopy volume reduction, as you can see in this picture, even um, 20 years of planting. So Semanchik then continued his work and inoculated navel trees with citrus dwarfing viroid, which were also dwarfed. And you can see almost 20 years post planting how impressive that canopy uh, reduction is. Now in his experiments with navels and citrus dwarfing viroid, Semanchik planted the trees at high density. This is because now you have uh, smaller canopies, you can plant them closer to each other because there's no unwanted shading. And when Georges Vidalakis then analyzed the data by joining the project, he observed that at high density, the canopy volume reduction is even greater than at standard density for citrus dwarfing viroid dwarfed trees compared to the controls. So when I joined the group, um, I immediately saw the uh, potential uh, applications and advantages of using citrus dwarfing viroid and got really interested in this project obviously the high density plantings, that means that they have a potential to be used uh, and planted under protective structures. There's a potential for mechanized harvesting. And we should also consider the challenges that modern citric culture is facing. These include water shortages, farmland reduction, and increasing labor costs. Now, these are all factors that we must bear in mind that are all exacerbated by HLB but could be alleviated at least by the implementation and use of dwarfed trees. So as a biologist, I wanted to understand how citrus dwarfing viroid works. And as such, I began my work and asked several research questions. First and foremost, what is the mechanism through which citrus dwarfing viroid reduces citrus tree size? And then if the mechanism is determined, can the use of a transmissible agent be avoided in the production of dwarfed citrus trees? What other rootstock sign combination can be dwarfed by uh, citrus dwarfing viroid? We have the answer to some uh, from Professor Semanchik's project, but we don't know about others. What other horticulturally relevant traits are affected by citrus dwarfing viroid? Because of the nature of the project, they looked at canopy volume mainly, but there could be other things that we might be interested in. Precocity, when do they flower? Do they start flowering earlier compared to control trees? 
But today we're going to focus on the first question. So what is the mechanism? Now, to determine what makes smaller canopies, we looked at um, shoot length and growth. And what we found when we measured the length of five apical nodes and the net growth of apical shoots was that in uh, both of these uh, measured um, uh, uh, standards were reduced in citrus dwarfing viroid infected trees. And so we drew the conclusion that the, uh, the citrus dwarf environment induced canopy volume reduction is a result of reduced apical shoot growth. Very logical, but we have data to support this. Now, having established that the link between shoot growth and canopy volume um, existed, I wanted to understand how this works at the molecular level.